what up, dude? <laughs> Not much. So, uh, what do, you, what, do you, what do you think we should do today? Oh, wait, hold on. There's a hint. My goodness. My goodness. I, I saw that word. I've never, the only time I've ever seen that word is like in movies. <laughs> you know, when they say guards, cesium. Yeah, I know. That's kind of what I was thinking too. Like, oh, the jokes are real. Yeah. See, I just, I, I had to con contribute my, my joke, but, you know, make it a, <laughs> make it more of a quip. I was I was thinking about playing uh, uh, some Daft Punk today because we're going to be traveling around the world, but I couldn't find the song. So sadly, you have to listen to oh, us. Oh dang, dude! Yeah, <laughs> you got a, You would have got us uh, banished from all streaming platforms. Esty <laughs> Reich, <laughs> done and done. Yeah. So yeah, today we're gonna we're gonna jump back what into the Unreal Engine uh, because. I, that's what I want to do. I know it, I had mentioned last week that I thought, you know, maybe we'll do some jewelry stuff. I uh, didn't see any responses on that. So we're going to forego it. Uh, it's still out there. Um, I actually was making some fun little pendants this week. So it'd be kind of fun to go back and finish those if you all were actually interested in that. Um, but that's, you know, I got, I got no, no qualms either way. It's not that big of a deal. So let's kind of talk about what we need to do to get up and running and started in here. Uh, what are your plans for today's class? Yeah, so we're going to jump into Cesium and use the Unreal Engine. Um, this is, let's go ahead and bring this in here. Um, a couple things that you're going to need to make this happen. One, you're going to need the Unreal Engine. Lucky for everybody, it's for totally and completely free. Uh, so you can go and download it. Let me show you where you can find that. Um, boop. Um, if you were to, just do a quick search for Unreal Engine. You can go and download it. Um, as mentioned before, it's totally free. This, are, this is uh, the game engine that you can use to make just about anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be games. Uh, there's a lot of uses for this. Uh, here's one. There's some architecture right here too. Um, so Final Fantasy VII uh, came out on it. Um, obviously, Fork Knight. <laughs> I always want to call it Fortnite. Fork Knife. I know. I know Fork better knife. though. That's probably just because yeah. I'm horrible at it. Um, so you can grab yeah. that one. Uh, the other thing that you're going to want for this, which is also free, uh, is a Cesium plugin for this. And this is pretty wild. Uh, we are actually here in Denver. And when I first saw this, I was like, holy cow, that is Union Station. That is literally Union Station. Um, so this is all photogrammetry stuff. So we'll be jumping in and playing with this one. Uh, one of the things that I find really, really cool about this is that if you're a geography teacher, Unreal Engine has just totally got your back all of a sudden. Like it had it before, let's be honest. But this gives you a chance to like tr literally travel the world. And you'll, you'll see this as we're starting to play with this. This is pretty wild. Um, I absolutely love it. We're going to be able to get up above the atmosphere. We're going to go travel all over the world. You can sit in latitude and longitude. You can walk around on it. Um, I have noticed that the uh, the character is actually huge in comparison to the actual world, which is kind of funny. Uh, but we should be able to have, by the end of this, we should have a car in here too, and we can actually drive around the city, uh, which is kind of fun. Um, and of course, I'm going to go and make sure that you know we actually get a chance to visit the Blue Bear because it's super cool. Uh, and you'll see some of the problems with photogrammetry too. So... It's not like it's perfect uh, because photogrammetry is amazing, but it's not exactly what you want to do every single time. Um, the actual website where I'm going to be pulling the, some of this stuff, this is like literally the quick start guide. Um, so I'm going to copy this and drop it into the chat so you all have this. You know where I'm actually pulling this info. So if I'm going too fast or too slow, you can either speed up ahead or slow down on it. Um, there are actually a couple of pages to this, which is going to be really, really, really fun to kind of check out. So I've got one other last one here, but we'll hold on to that one here in a moment. So let's get the engine up and running. So to start this off, uh, we're going to start with a completely and totally blank world that has very little in it. So we're just going to launch the engine. Wait for it. Whoop. And it takes a moment. It's thinking, I promise you. Um, the Unreal Engine is huge. <laughs> so it takes a little bit to get up and running. Wait, my poor computer is trying to do 57,000 things at once. But it will make do. There it goes. So essentially, really what we need to do, um, each one of these are great. They actually tell you what you're going to be doing. Uh, but then also some of the prerequisites. So obviously you need 4.26 or later to get this to actually work. Uh, so that will be really important in here too. Um, one of the things that's really important to know is that there's a streaming service. 
So things are going to kind of pop in and out. This is not going to be like perfect game mode. Like there things are going to kind of come and go uh, as we're actually working with this. Uh, it was about 75%. Um, so don't expect it to be awesome. There are a few tweaks that we can do as we're actually running through this that will actually help you out, which is awesome. Um, so essentially what you're going to want to do is once this thing actually opens up here, uh, we're going to just choose games. Um, we're going to choose a completely and totally blank level and then make sure that we're not starting with any starter content for two reasons. One, we don't need it. <laughs> and two, it'll just make our project a little bit smaller and we're not really going to be playing so much as a game in here anyway. So uh, let's go ahead and choose that one. We'll just start. And then up here in the top left, we'll choose our blank one. I'll we'll just say next. And then again, no starter content. Um, and then make sure you're saving it somewhere where it's going to be easy to find later. Um, and we're just going to name this one Cesium. I'll just say create project. I'll disappear. Go away. Um, once we actually get inside the game engine, I'm not going to be explaining a lot of how to actually navigate and move around um, until we actually start to like really need to worry about it. But that's what it is. Um, hold on. My UI is going to look a little bit different than yours. So let's go up here into window. And let's just go to load layout. I'm going to set up a default layout. Boom, there we go. New plugins available down here in the bottom right. I'm going to ignore that. We don't need that. That's totally fine. So we do need the actual Cesium plugin before we can get anywhere. Um, otherwise, it's just not going to work. So we're going to come up here into our settings. Up here at the very top, I'm just come down here into plugins. And there will be a host of things that we can actually grab. Everything from cool water to chaos stuff. But what we want over here on the far left is this geospatial area. It says, hey, this is brand new. Here's the thing, right? So we can just say enabled, click our little checkbox here. Down at the bottom, you'll see the Unreal Editor must be restarted for this plugin to take effect. That's totally fine. Um, since we've already kind of created our project, all we have to do is hit our restart now, and this will actually run really quickly, which is really nice. Okay, so hey, there it is. This is pretty much everything that we're doing. Uh, we're going to get rid of a lot of the actors that are actually inside of our world, because again, we're not going to need them. It's really not that important. Yay, boom, see, it comes back really quick. So we'll just close that down. So set actors, um, everything that you see inside here. So from our atmospheric fog all the way down to our sphere reflection capture, just select all that stuff and just hit delete on the keyboard. Uh, do you really want to break this reference? Yeah, that's fine. Go away. So we should have totally black blank world, like nothing, nothing. Um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're actually saving our stuff as we go along because Unreal Engine will crash. It's like any kind of program. It's a thing, right? So we're just going to say save current up here in the top left. It's going to say, where do you want to save this? Uh, so I'm going to come all the way up here to my content. Um, I've got a few extra things turned on. You may not have that. Let me show you what that's all about. So this show engine content and show plugin content, we're going to need these in a moment anyways. So from our little view options down here in the corner, I've just got these ones on. If they're turned off when you save your project, it'll look a little bit more like this. So down here at the bottom, let's just give it a name. So, okay, cesium map level it's a map it's the same thing so we'll go ahead and say save boom so there's that so that's good to go now the other thing that we want to do is when we open up this project again we want it to actually load this map which is going to be really helpful so we can make that a default by coming up here to our settings and then if we go into our project settings oh i lied it's over here project settings and over here in our maps and modes so over here on the far left we just want to change our editor startup map. So it says template default. We don't want that. We want our cesium map right there and right there. So when our editor starts up, it'll actually start on that map. And when our game starts up, it'll actually start up on the map. Now we're not going to be exporting this out as an actual exe game, but if you wanted to, you could definitely make that happen. It's a thing, right? Actually, I don't know if cesium would come out as a game because it is a streaming setup. Ooh. Mm, experiment for later. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be entertaining. Oh my goodness. Okay. So at this point, I'm on uh, step two on that website. So we're going to add in some sun and some lighting uh, inside of our actual world here. Um, so to make that happen, um, well, actually, we want to change the way the sun and the lighting is actually working first. Um, so back inside of, I shouldn't have closed that down, back inside of our project settings, uh, we're going to do a search up here at the very top. So way up here luminance and what we're doing is we're looking for this extended default luminance range and auto exposure settings 
So this is currently toggled off by default. It's on false. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And we'll get another little medicine medicine message down here at the bottom. This is, hey, we want to restart now. So yes, we want to restart now. Wait for it. It's pretty quick. Painless. Done, done. Cool. So this is where we're going to come down here to view options. And this is where we want to go and turn our show engine and show plugin content on. Let's turn those bad boys on right here. And with those on, now we can actually get some of the cool little toys. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, in the instructions, it tells you to click right here on this choose a path. This will give you this whole giant list of stuff. You can also click over here on the far left on this little button. You'll get everything that you need here. Okay. So what we're looking for is the cesium stuff. So there's cesium for Unreal, da -da, right there. And we want to bring in two pieces, the cesium sun and sky and a floating pond. So here's our floating pond, and here is our sun and sky. So I'll just click and drag these into our world. See, everything goes super bright. Um, I'm going to take one last little <laughs> extra step that it actually doesn't talk about inside the instructions here. And with this object thing selected, because this is a bunch of pieces, this is a blueprint, um, over here on the location, I'm just going to reset it. So I'm just going to hit the little yellow reset to default arrow. And I'm just going to send that back to zero, 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 scale and size and everything. Take our floating pawn, do the same thing. And then I'm just going to lift this up off the spot right there. So this is all we have in here so far, just a couple of pieces. Okay. Now what we want to be able to do, so we're going to kind of do a little bit of planning ahead here, is that when we start actually navigating around inside this world, we want to be inside that pond. So right now we're not going to be inside that pond if we were to come up here and hit the play button, which is up here in the top right. So to make that a thing with our pond actually selected, um, we're going to search and this search details. <laughs> I did this wrong last night. Search components. We don't want to search components up here. We want to search in our details in here. So we're going to look for possess. And there's this. Let's open this up a little bit so you can see this. So auto possess player. Right now it's set to disabled. Um, there is only one player in here, and that is us. So we're going to use player zero because we're in a, a zero base here. So boop, there we go. Okay, so at this point, we're going to deviate just a little bit um, and how fast we're going to be able to set this up. Up here on the top, it says cesium. This is the plugin, right? So if I click this, over here on the far left, you'll notice that we have a different kind of setup now. We're no longer in our place actors, but we have our cesium stuff. Now I've already got a cesium account because I set this up yesterday. So I'm going to just hit connect and whoop, it should pop up. Ta -da, there you go. So this is what it's going to uh, have once you actually get your accounts set up. So down here at the bottom of it, you're just going to say allow. So if you don't have an account yet, which you probably don't, uh, you just create one, they're free, and then just go and say allow. And then it says, hey, you did the thing. And then if you come back over here, you will notice, let me close that browser. You'll notice that your little area over here is completely and totally updated. So now we can start to like actually add in some fun things in here. Uh, if you wanted to dig a little bit farther inside of the CZM account, uh, while you guys are probably setting this up, um, over here, we've got like stories, and then my assets, the asset depot, asset tokens, and then usage. Um, and I've got all of my stuff set up so that it's on a free account through uh, my uh, school being a teacher, there's a plus for that, being an educator, right? So inside the Asset Depot, you will find all kinds of stuff. Now, I've already added in uh, the, Denver, uh, the Denver photogrammetry piece. So this is what Denver was photogrammetrized. <laughs> Let's see that. So I already grabbed this one and then you just hit the little add button over here to add which one you want. Now in the actual cesium like walkthrough, uh, they come down here and actually use Melbourne. So we'll go ahead and add this one in there. But I wanted to explore Denver because I was like, oh, it's Denver. That's home. I like that, right? So I definitely wanted to check it out. But there's also New York in here. Um, there's some other, like Washington, D.C. So this is cool. Uh, you'll notice on the right, there's this 3D tiles, terrain, and then imagery. I honestly haven't played with anything but Denver. So we'll find out what these each ones do. Um, inside of the My Assets, you will notice that this is actually in here now. This right here being in this My Assets will allow me to add it in over here inside of Unreal. So a couple of things to kind of look for over there. So I've already got photogrammetry in here, so this is good to go. You'll notice I've got, <laughs> I've used up 20 gigs of my five gig space. <laughs> so, Nicely done. <laughs> I'm Extra already credit. Uh, I'm just overachiever, right? That's what that is. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so with that all out of the way, <clears throat> let's come over here to our cesium tab, right? And then up here at the top, it says cesium world terrain, big maps and aerial geometry. I'm just gonna hit the plus button. 
and give it a moment. Remember, this is a streaming service. So it's my computer is currently streaming to y'all. It's also streaming off to, you know, this other setup. So it should take a moment. Bop, 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 bop. There we go. Whoa. We have a world here. So I'm going to hit F11 and so y'all can just kind of see this. I'm also going to come up here and change my camera speed up to something like six or seven. And then there we go. Now I can move a lot faster. So I'm not sure how it knows or if it actually knows where I'm at, but this is actually just outside of Denver. Uh, this is Golden right here. This is this little town. Means if we turn around, we should see, be able to see the M on the mountain. Ta da! Look at that. There it is. School of Mines. School of Mines. There it is. Okay, so see how it's kind of crunching? So that's resolution. I don't have hard time with it. There we go. Uh, Coors is right down there. Brewery. It's the brewery right there. I mean, it's part of the it. brewery, eh? <laughs> it's all over the place. Uh, there's table, North Table Mountain, South Table Mountain. And there's a, is the G. Can we see the G on here? Where's that? It's been forever since I've been in Golden. Um, but yeah, so there it is. Um, okay, so the only thing you may have noticed, there's this really dark black line in the background. Uh, so we want to fix that. So we hit F11, jump back out of there. So with our, is there a G reference? Yeah, the reference here. So with our reference selected, let's clear out our search right here. And we want to find our cesium sky. And under sky, sun and sky, set to none, uh, we're going to change this one. And we're just going to change this to the cesium sun and sky. Boom, like that. And that clears out that little dark line that was right there on the horizon, which is nice to have. Or at least to not have, as it were. I wish we had clouds. That would be really nice. <laughs> right? That'd be cool. Um, you will also notice with our geo reference selected, we actually have a latitude and longitude. So you can pump in where you want to go. Uh, so there's that one right there. Uh, and then your height right here too. So this is how far off, off the, this is our altitude really is what it is. Um, so there's that. Um, inside of... Make sure I'm grabbing the right one. Uh, sun and sky. Okay, so we want our sun and sky up here too. So we also have a latitude and longitude as well. We also have a time zone in here. Um, we've got a month and a day. Um, we can update our sun and then we have our solar time right here. So this is 13 is one o'clock. For those of you that don't know that. So if I did like uh, eight o'clock, it's so dark. <laughs> but eight, five, check that out. Whoa, cool. So we actually have... Here comes the sun. <laughs> Check it out. So because we are using atmospheric yeah, atmospheric effects, uh, we should be able to. So let's take my camera. I'm going to speed this way up. Hit F11. And then I'm just going to start scooting back. Keep going. Keep going. Can I go any faster than that? As you can see, we can just keep going. Like we have the entire world to go like play around on. Oop, there we go. So it pops and then you got your atmosphere. So you can actually see the oh, atmosphere. Oh, cool. <laughs> There's your clouds. <laughs> right? There's the thing. So yeah, pretty wild. Uh, we don't have any stars. Obviously, it's going to be totally black out there, but that's fun. This is my view from the Starlink satellite that I need to sign up for. Elon <laughs> Musk needs much. to hook me up. I need to... I need to be floating up there with them satellites. Do the thing. Wow, what is that? A reservoir or something? Or is yeah, that? I don't know. I don't know what that one is. It's really fast right now. Yeah. It's right up reservoir. Not so hot. Um, That's a yeah. thing. So go find your backyard. I found one of my old houses, actually. It was kind of fun. <laughs> nice. So here's kind of the start of it. Um, but let's take this a little bit farther. So we want to add in, so let's add in just some generic buildings in here too. Um, so over here on the left, let's open this up a little bit. Actually, we won't need the content browser like at all at this point. Um, over here on the far left, there's this big fat add button. So if we click that, oh, of course the content browser that's attached to it. So inside of here, we have our cesium ion assets. So here you can see we've got our Denver, we've got our buildings, we got roadmaps, aerial labels, maps with aerials and world terrain. And um, if you don't have these in here, this is where uh, your assets from 
your cesium actually come in. You can see that these kind of match up. So they're on the left and they're on the right. Okay, so you can always add more to it. Um, just go into that asset depot that I was talking about before. I'll just bring that back. So you go back into your asset depot and you can choose these and it will populate this stuff down here. Now, as soon as you add it, it doesn't auto populate down here. So what you'll have to do is actually close it down and then hit that add button again, and then it'll update. So it's not totally streaming 100%. It's pretty good though. And where did my instructions go? Bring it back, bring it back. Okay, so we want to bring in the uh, these buildings, so the cesium OSM buildings. So we can do that one, and then there's a big fat add button or add to level button. Um, it'll give you a little bit of information of what's going on down here, which is kind of cool. So we'll just do that. Bloop, and then they just start to populate. Whoa! What? So I've got all those. Now I do know where I am in the world. Let's actually change this time of day. Let's say like nine. Wait for it to kind of catch up. Ooh, let's actually go like. Let's go 11. Now, is it, did that put a three dimensional building where buildings existed or did it just make stuff up? Uh, no, this is all scan data. So, wow. where there is a building, uh, there is an actual, you know, kind of block out kind of building thing, which is kind of cool. Um, gotcha. They're not 100% accurate, but we're getting there. Yeah, if you really wanted to go visit Coors, we can. Let's see where that Coors building actually is in relationship to what's you know, the actual geographical landscape is. And of course, there are these little eyeballs over here inside of your rural outliner up here in the top right. Um, so if you turn those off, you can get an idea kind of what what's going on. Looks like there's a magic thing over here. What's this? this. <laughs> <laughs> They're like tapping into the plans, future right. expansion. That's going to be the thing. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, my old neighborhood is just on the other side of this building or this uh, mountain. <laughs> I was like, oh, hey, that's where I used to live. Oh, nice. Interesting to see all that. Um, again, you know, you can come in here and change your latitude and longitude, kind of figure out where you want to be at. Um, I do know where Denver is from here. So if we turn our camera up a little bit, we come zipping over here. Oh, where all my buildings go? There they are. Okay. Mm -hmm. na, 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 na. Here is Denver. There uh, for is. those of you that had seen our um, stream where we were playing with Twin Motion, uh, this spot right here is where we were actually kind of looking at in, De in Denver. Uh, it's just right here, which is kind of fun. So if we actually turn our camera down a little bit and zoom in here so you can kind of see this park. Um, you see the Capitol building, you can see that you know some of these buildings are actually pretty well built up. Like they're not just blocks, which is kind of cool. Uh, ooh, speaking of really cool buildings, I wonder if... Nope, they don't. <laughs> I was going to say, here's the Denver Art Museum. Uh, but you can, I mean, at least you can go into the bridge. It's cool. You don't have the little broom. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to see the broom here in a minute. This is going to be cool, right? So cool. So that pretty much completes the first part. This is a quick up, quick startup. So if you wanted to find a specific area, ta-da, then you can go zip around and go check it out, right? Um, so we can also add in photogrammetry information, which is really, really, really fun. Uh, so again, like I said, I already got the Denver stuff. So I'm just going to turn off these buildings because I don't want to see those. Um, and I've already got the photogrammetry right here. So all I have to do is select it, say add to level, give it a minute, whoop, and then it pops in. So, point. where did, there it is, it's the Denver Art Museum. And you'll notice that it kind of flickers and pops. Let's go big screen here. Check it out, there it is. Ta da. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, photogrammetry is not the greatest. You can see there are a couple of little things that are kind of floating in here, uh, depending on how close or how far away you get to them. Um, but it does get pretty decent resolution. There's a statue actually right here behind it of the cow. Let me bring this down a little bit. And the calf, um, and we can actually make this look even better, which is awesome. So we want to jump back in here. So at this point, uh, adding the photogrammetry, it's like, oh, let's grab in Melbourne, right? So we're gonna we're gonna play around in Denver a little bit before we actually go any farther. Um, and we can see if I remember how to grab this one. So up in here, 
we can actually say what kind of resolution we want. Ah, I've just got to find the button. It's actually going to allow us to do that. Oh, it's actually going to skip ahead. All right, so we're going to, okay, before we get nice resolution, the artist in me wants nice clean stuff, but we're going to do some technical stuff first. <laughs> so anyways, in Denver, uh, we can actually go to uh, that big blue bear. So as long as my camera will go at a decent speed. There we go. And it should be food. Remember, where, do, do we know? Do we know where we're at, Brian? Do I know where I'm at? Do you know where you're at? <laughs> there we are. Da, 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 da. There it is. There it is. So the big blue bear. So this is the thing I wanted to kind of point out. Uh, when it comes to photogrammetry, it's not like the most amazing, perfect thing. You'll notice that our bear is kind of stuck and attached to the building. Oh, cool. <laughs> so the geometry is doing what it can with what it's got. It's uh, like it's, it was like a glue trap for bears, right? <laughs> yeah, gotcha. But however, you will notice, like, check out how clean some of this stuff is. Like, wow, this is impressive. You've got your these beautiful murals all around Denver. So so cool to kind of go and check out. Um, you can actually read. I was playing with this. Look at that. You can actually read that stuff. The Denver Theater District. Phenomenal. So cool. So cool. You know that that um what what do you think the pixel resolution is on that billboard? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, holy moly, I just turned my camera. Because I I designed a banner for it. Oh, um, did you? Yeah. Oh. Um Guess ballpark. I would guess somewhere around 4K. It's like it's it's like 400 pixels or 600 pixels. It's like what? ridiculously low res. Like, oh my gosh! It's, it's insane. Like the uh, what you would expect <laughs> and what it is. It's way less. Like the um, uh, I should go look for the image to find out exactly what it was. But yeah, I was blown away. I'm like, what? Like that's this crazy. little image. That's... Ooh, look at that. That's sharp. Yeah. So this is a Denver Union Station. This is the what's in the trailer kind of thing, right? So we can actually set this up. Um, there's some really cool fountains, actually. For those of you that are ever going to come to Denver, there's some really, really fun fountains to kind of play with over here. Now you'll notice that uh, we've kind of got this kind of like it looks like dirt and things going on here. And that's just because this photogrammetry piece is like actually sitting down like on the actual surface of the uh, the globe that we've got in here. So uh, we can select it and then we can just kind of lift it up. Oh, that was the wrong one. Give me the geometry. There we go. Um, I was going to change our Z value here. And we can just kind of lift this up off the ground until it stops clipping through. Um, through the documentation, like, oh, we're going to fix that later. So, you know, it's going to be fixed later. Which is pretty cool. I'm gonna jump over here. Um, so let's go ahead and add in uh, a character here too, because we can actually add in a character and run around inside of our world, which is really, really fun to do. <laughs> Lo-fi monk, this is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. I love it. It's so much fun. I was really hoping that we could do like every city, uh, but I think we have to get like a commercial version to actually check out like everything, which would be super fun. Okay, so to add in a character, uh, what we need to do is to actually add in a couple pieces. So over here in the content browser, um, over here under add import, um, we want to click on this and we're going to add in a feature or content pack. Now, some of you may be familiar with this as a great way to get like the starter content, but we're not going to grab the starter content. Instead, we're going to grab a third person. I guess it's going to be our first person, but it's the third person. Okay, you get it, whatever. Okay. Add to the project, bloop, and then it just adds it in there. Okay, we don't need this anymore, let's go away. So over here on the left, you see now we have this third person. So if we go inside of our blueprints and we have our third person character right here, you can literally just drag and drop said person in there, boom, and there it is. Like I said, you'll notice he's a bit huge. Well, it's not too bad, it's a little bit big. So there's that. Now, one of the things that we're gonna have to deal with, let's actually move him over here a little bit. 
and I'll just rotate right around so that we're facing there. Uh, one of the things is you'll you'll notice is that if we start to play this, if you've started to play this, you have noticed that you you are actually the th that pawn, that floating pawn, right? So we want to set it up so that we can actually float around using this one. Uh, so I'm going to select my floating pawn here and then look for possess again. And I'm going to take my player zero off, set it to disabled. And then with this one selected, we're going to change our disabled to player zero. And if we press play, <laughs> this will be really silly, but we'll do it anyways. You will notice everything goes completely and totally white. Ah, the void. And I'm way over here. Why am I over here? Oh, I was not expecting that. That means something else is terribly wrong. Ooh, and our character. Okay, what I was trying to show you is that um, our character has actually like fallen down through the ground because this is a streaming service. So it didn't actually load the ground enough for our character to actually stand on it. So that's a problem. Uh, so to zip back over to where we were, um, I can just select my third person character up here and press the F key on the keyboard. There we go. So this is here. Uh, are we not out of possessing? That's very strange. Third person character. That was set to disabled. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So <coughs> anyways, to move on, um, because he will fall through the floor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my cube and just drag it out and set it underneath. And we'll just make it large enough that he should land on it. And we're also going to lift it up a little bit because this has actually got physics on it. So that should work. I'm also going to take my pawn here and set that to player zero. Let's just see if that's going to fix our issue here. So then we'll hit the play button. Roop. Just play. It'll be bright for half a second. Oh, and we're still over here. Well, look at that. All right. Well, I've done Some something. People here. just love the mountains, you know. You can't get a can't get away. You can't get away from it. Interesting. Apparently, I've done something incorrect. Bummer. I don't know why it's doing that. Is it your oh. play? Uh... <sighs> okay, world settings. <laughs> so into your game mode. Um, we probably need to set our game mode. All right, let me look back through a documentation. Quick break, quick break. Talk amongst yourselves. That's, that's, uh, any topic will do. <laughs> Please discuss. Unreal Game Engine is the greatest game engine. Changed my mind. <laughs> Yeah, let's see here. You were talking about fountains, and that reminded me of my uh, of my live stream, oh. where we made a fountain in in Mean Meancroft. I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at the website for uh, Cesium, and it looks like you could import your 3D drone data. Stream it to digital twins and apps. People, they use it for flight operations, build powerful flight planning and simulation applications. So you can um, probably like for drone flying, I wonder if they're licensing stuff for the future of drone delivery and such to make sure you don't hit, at least you map a course based on buildings and things like that okay so i think i may have figured out what the issue is but this is going to take a minute to fix uh, uh, all right we're just going to delete those two out of there <laughs> that's going to fix that problem denver zoom in on it so i think i think the issue whoops was um i hadn't actually set my place geo origins here i think that might have been one of the issues um, let's go ahead and select my pawn. It should have been able to fly around and move. Okay, yeah, now I can move. Okay, interesting. I wonder why I couldn't before. All right, so now that we have that, select our Denver, hit F. All right, zoom back down into this. It's saying you could, you could visualize things underground. I actually knew a guy that had contracts with the government in Iraq where they would actually, their job was to map underground tunnels and stuff like that, make robots oh, wow. that make robots that do that. I'm like, that's that cool. is wild. 
Um, but it looks like you can visualize underground structures. Wow. Okay, that should give me that. Let's grab my character. Select him. Set this at zero. Fingers crossed. There we go. Now we've got it. Yeah, so it looks like I just needed to set that geo thing up. Okay, so now I've landed on the this so I can move around. And you notice I've got this big white kind of building here in the background. And that's just because I still have those geo buildings in there. But I can literally just come up here. Let's grab those buildings. Whoops. And then just hit delete. Get rid of those. Say play. There we go. Ta-da. Nice. Get off the light rail, hop on your scooter, head to your job, pick up a coffee and a baguette. We need your uh, we need your Minecraft fountains in here so we can actually see our fountains. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So one of the things that you'll notice is that the buildings are not in like the highest resolution and they get better and better and better as you get close to them. Um, and what it's doing is it's basically just kind of saving on frame rate because there's a lot here. Uh, photogrammetry geometry is incredibly expensive. So it's, it's always worth it to understand that that's a thing. Um, we can, however, kind of make some of this stuff look a little bit better and cleaner. And let me find that. So y'all have that as well. How do you think they capture this stuff? Is it from the ground or is it from drone or what? Because they're obviously not. I got a feeling it's drone. Um, and the reason that I say that is because from, ho ho, like if you see, well, here's a good example. Like, you know, you, you can actually kind of read some of this stuff and we're going to be able to see it here a little bit better um, in a moment. Um, Because otherwise, I mean, some of this stuff is like it's facing away from the camera. So you're like, oh, how does that actually, how does that actually work? Um, where is that at? I think it's further down here. Here we go. So we want to grab, uh, so let's grab the geometry. So yeah, so the Apex, Aeromax, sorry, uh, Aero Matrix. And then over here, if we do a search for... Pretty sure it's just level of detail here. Yeah, level of detail right there. So if we, it's currently set at 16, but if we set it at something like two. Should get, yeah, look how much cleaner that became. Down in here. I think it's just this area. Yeah, it's just this area. But you can see that that's like, look at that. I mean, there's no way you'd be able to get that from the sky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's not a thing, right? Yeah. So it's it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Now it's going to start to lag out quite a bit because we're pumping a lot of information in here. And one of the other things that we can do in here too, you'll notice. Let's go ahead and bring this open a second. If I turn the camera, things kind of pop on the edges. <laughs> hey, I hit my limit of streaming, right? So you'll notice, see those shadows there on the left, they kind of come and they go. So what's happening is the game engine knows that it's not really on screen, so I'm not going to render it. It doesn't really matter. Um, but if we turn this frustrum culling off, it brings everything in. So even though it's not on screen, it's still actually rendering behind us as soon as I actually get it on camera. So you can see it makes a big difference. So we can up the quality and we can make this look nice and pretty. Oop, there we go. That's going to come back in here. All right. So that's a good. Uh, the concept of culling is like removing potentially unnecessary processes or burdens to the yep. compute cycle. Yep. So we don't need it. There's no sense in having it in there. So I'm going to turn that back on because my computer is officially trying to set itself on fire. <laughs> yeah, we've got, I see the smoke. I see, the, now I know where you live. I see the smoke. Right, that's right, right over, right over there on the other yeah, side. I see, the wow. Station, right? um, that... So I'm also going to turn this down a little bit because uh, let's go back down to like 12. This works a lot better when you're not streaming on two different services. Like it's, it's actually really powerful. There we go. Okay, so there's that. Um, the other thing, and I don't know if this is actually going to work or not, uh, but we can actually bring in a car and actually have our drive around the city, which is kind of fun too. So over here, let's go to add import. 
and we're going to come back up to our feature content pack. And instead of here, we can actually go with our advanced vehicle. So we can add that one in there. Oh, by the way, I would save at this point if you haven't already. That'd be a great idea. <laughs> Wait for it. Okay, there it goes. Okay. So the car, um, we need to actually set up a little bit of code to get this to work, uh, but we can come in here and grab our vehicle blueprint, right? Is the one they're asking us to grab? Yeah. So we can drag our blueprint in here. Ooh, wait for it. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna officially save because I know better. Save all. Let's give it a moment. Um, so something that we have to worry about with the car is that uh, it's it's actually physics based, uh, so it'll fall through things, um, which is not great. So we have to set up a way to keep it from falling through the ground, and we also have to set it up so that we can possess it too. Um, so we are gonna get into a little bit of blueprint here. And this is super easy to do. So let's turn down my camera just a little bit. Okay, so blueprint stuff. Uh, up here at the top of the screen, uh, we're actually going to go into the level blueprint. Um, when you're doing games, uh, this is something you use sparingly because you don't want the level to be controlling a lot of things. But there are certain things you have to use. So we're going to go and use it for this one. So let's click on that. We're going to say open level blueprint. And this is like the actual map that we created to the CZM map. This is the blueprint that kind of holds all that together. We get this big giant grid of stuff. Wait for it. There it is. Now we don't need any of these. I'm just gonna left mouse click and drag, delete those. And what I'm gonna look for is uh, a couple of keyboard shortcuts. So keyboard, I'm gonna look for C because I want the C key. And we're also going to, um, we can actually come up here. Let's up here on the top left, we can search for V. Sometimes it, there we go. Yeah, so we'll use C and V to kind of jump in and out of both of our vehicle and our character. So zoom in on this a little bit. So from released, uh, we're gonna go ahead and say unpossess. Oh, <laughs> we have to turn context sensitive off, by the way. So we can have, ooh, are you gonna give it to me? We want to unpossess, and we're going to get the player controller. So from here, we drag off and say get player controller. It's down here at the bottom. Boop. Cool. Um, and then we're going to then go over here and possess. And this is going to be our target. And then for our, yeah, okay. So for the thing that we actually want to get a hold of, um, we need to select our character. So then we can go back into here. And if we right click, ooh, is it going to give it to me? Contact sensitive, got to be back on. We want to create a reference to our third person character. So you have to select your character in the level, make sure contact sensitive is on. And when you right click, you can then go ahead and get a reference to that character. And then this, we're just going to drag that in there. So when we hit the C key, we're going to unpossess uh, the controller and then repossess, unpossess and repossess the controller. But when we unpossess it, we're going to connect our character to it, which is going to be helpful. Now this, we can pretty much grab all of this. Control W, I'm just going to duplicate it. We don't want the character on this part of it, though. We want that actual car. And remember, we're using the released, not the pressed. Little, little tiny thing in there. So then we'll grab our uh, actual car here. Right click, make sure we've got content sex sensitive on, and then we'll use that one and then drop that in there. Okay. So remember, we talked about physics being a thing. So on the end of this, we want to set simulate physics. Need to have that up. There we go. So context sensitive off for that one too. There we go. Now, if I actually had the vehicle selected and pulled one off here, I bet I could probably do it. Oh, can't do it that way. Haha, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so that's going to be there. Um, 
We do want a copy of this. So I'm going to duplicate that up there. If you connect it up, it'll give you the little piece in between that we need because it's trying to get a hold of the mesh. We're just going to grab those two, bring those down here, connect this up. And we can just connect to that like so. Now, the other thing we want to do is that when we actually possess the vehicle, which is what we're doing down here on the bottom, we do want to simulate the physics. And then when we leave the vehicle and actually possess the character, we want to turn the physics off. And the reason this is, is the physics is still on. It's going to fall through the world and our car is going to go to, you know, the center of the mantle. And we don't want that. Can you go to the center of the mantle? Is that even a thing? I don't Know on the fireplace yeah sure <laughs> maybe, maybe there you know the middle child gets the stocking location there for the people that do that there's my car so if i hit the v key drive around dude man you're gonna get arrested oh yeah. <laughs> Dang. You need a so roll cage no on that. In there. That's good times. That's nice suspension, dude. Burp, burp, burp. But how freaking cool to like Mars Rover in Denver, just like that. Yep. In Unreal. This is this is definitely where you're not supposed to be driving. <laughs> Ooh, we're going over. So <sighs> I'm That's stuck. interesting. Did does it <laughs> does it go based on the resolution? It seemed to it seemed to when the resolution increased, it smoothed out. Yeah, it's and it's actually relative to the yeah. So it does. It's it's actually thinking about uh, the physical ground uh, okay. as being a thing for sure. So so yeah, um, there's a lot of things that we can actually play with as far as uh, resolution too. Uh, for like the ground and the world. Um, so let's see here. Da, 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 da. So inside of our actual geometry on this one. So there's another quick tangent. My brother has always wanted a video game where you could drive from one place to the other, like drive from LA to New York and like as a race car game. Like, and we, we quite literally are doing that at this point. Like, this is so cool. Like, uh, you don't even have to stop for gas. Like, hey, I had that on the Commodore. Great American great american road race yeah yeah, yeah. you literally like it's it's like night rider for hours <laughs> it was good awesome awesome it okay. was not to, it was not to scale <laughs> it was not to scale right um so yeah so for for gameplay stuff you know we're actually going to select our Denver geometry and this is that maximum screen space uh error uh so I've set mine at 12. Obviously, the higher this number is, the lower resolution it becomes. So it's opposite. Um, so if you you know if you set this at like two, like I had before, you get nice crisp geometry. Um, now this is only affecting the photogrammetry area. This is not affecting like the rest of the actual planet. Um, and then this uh, frustum culling, this one is also important too. So give or take how you actually want the gameplay to work. And is this really a game? How are you going to play with it? There's that too. So. Um, that's it. That's like everything I kind of wanted to walk through in here. Uh, we can do a couple of other little silly fun things. Um, because we have a third person character here, let's actually open him up. So with this character selected, I'm going to hit control E on the keyboard and it's going to open up the editor specifically for this. And over here on the far left, I'm going to go into the character movement and let's go up to the little eyeball. I'm just going to collapse all categories. It makes it a little bit easier to find what I'm looking for. And specifically, we have jumping and falling. So we can set our jump Z velocity. So we set this like something like 2000. I'm going to say compile. And now we're going to play. Wait for it, everything to come back. And that car just like zipped off somewhere. I have no idea where it just disappeared to. All right. But now you can see I can kind of jump around on the, the world. We bad part of town. Oh, you get that. Can I get up there? Yeah, there we go. Go hang out on the roof. <laughs> Ta -da. And this beautiful art architecture that's back here. I love this thing. This is so cool. You can see everything that's back here, too. That's crazy. 
There's another really nice sculpture. I think it's quite a ways down here. Look, Amtrak was in town when they were doing this. Look at that. Did you ever write Amtrak there, Clever Like? No. I, I've looked into it. It's, it doesn't seem like it's necessarily like an economical thing to do. Um, <laughs> and it seems like more of a fun, like it'd be a fun thing to do. I don't know. We've, I've shopped that as an option for travel. It never seems to, uh, never seems to win. Look at that, though. Yeah, it's too bad. It's such a low resolution. So this is a really cool, another really cool sculpture. This is all my sculpture history and things. I'm like, oh, these are really fun to go see. Um, so I used to take Amtrak back and forth from Emeryville to Denver uh, mm -hmm. every Christmas uh, to come home and visit. Um, yeah, Tell it's a about. really, really cool experience. Um, you're right. It's not very economical. It, it used to be a little bit less expensive, but for a distance like that, it works pretty well. So that's nice. That's like yeah, it, it seems like it would be a fun thing to do. Like it really, is. Track, especially like through the mountains. Like some of the the mountain railroad tracks are. Yeah. So are the uh, it was the California Zephyr, and it actually goes up over Donner Pass, and you can see where the trees were cut down uh, during the whole Donner party situation. Um, and they're cut off because <laughs> they're, oh, they're cut off like where they could see them. And they're 10, 12, 15 feet up off the ground is where they're actually at, which is wow. pretty entertaining. And my vehicle must have died because I can't switch to it. You know, the story <laughs> with the Donner party is they got, they got a late start and they got sold a shortcut map. Oh, I didn't hear about the shortcut totally host. Yeah, I do know like, the here's, here's a way to make up some time. Go this way. Not so much. Not lesson, so much. Lear lesson learned. I was just researching the concept of, um, I haven't really been immersed in this enough to really know this term, but twin, I'm seeing like the term twin used a lot in CZM's website. And I'm realizing like twin motion uses twin as well. And so I was like, oh, twin is a thing. And a, <laughs> and a twin is a virtual recreation of a real building. Oh, interesting. And so they use it sometimes to even like where they, they connect the sensors from the building and kind of overlay them on the virtual building as a way of monitoring and predicting and, and um, kind of evaluating a building's performance and things like that. Um, so yeah, so the, so this technology cesium uses all the data to create a twin basically recreating real buildings in a virtual world hey it's the, <laughs> where's the wolf <laughs> Mowdy! What's, your, what's your latitude and longitude buddy i know you're over there somewhere uh, he's up north he's yeah. like yeah he's up in the uh he's up at the knee I believe, like Milan area, uh, I think closer to Switzerland. So you Oops. Oh, see the cool. mountains. And then Rome is kind of like in the middle of the boot. And then you got the yeah, Basilicata okay. in the arch. We've got, uh, let's see if we change our time of day. Change that while we're actually in game. Ooh, let's see if we can do that. It's That's cool. Amazing. It's like, you know, Google Earth, except you can actually drop uh, drop a character into it. Ooh, go under through the earth here. Where did, where did everything go? Have a look at closer. Here we go. I'm trying to get look at that and all that. I have no idea which way north is at this point. <laughs> I'm so turned around. <laughs> Seriously, what are we even looking at? No, I can't tell what that is. It looks like stained glass. Right. Okay, we're back in Denver. Ta da! Back to Denver. Here it is. That's really cool. So, what are what are some use cases for stuff like this that? Um, that we could see this being used for. 
the the biggest thing that I really see, I mean, you know, is a simple thing. Like I'd mentioned before, geography is a huge thing there. However, you know, we can really take this same idea and push it uh, when it comes to um, um, not architecture. Yeah, my my brother in law does this, um, but they scan specific areas so they can lay it out for um, uh, not necessarily for putting down buildings, but understanding the differences and you know like where are they going to put down roads? Is what like civil kind of engineering. Of civil Thank engineering. You. Thank you. Yeah, that's the one. Um, okay. So this is really powerful because you can drop your own uh, photogrammetry information into it, um, which is really nice. Yeah, there was no error in there. Um, so just having that alone is is phenomenal. Like it's, it's super cool to be able to do that. Um, and if you have a drone, you can very easily take photogrammetry shots with it. Um, here, let's just tangent for a moment because um, uh, just whip out the drone real quick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Sorry. So recap. So Autodesk has another free program that you can pick up. I'm just going to drop this on here. Um, it's called uh, Recap. Uh, now, it's, it, I said free, but then we're dropping this. I'm used to educational and student versions of it. It's totally free for them. Download free trial. Um, so you can use this software uh, to go around and like take pictures of kind of whatever you want, interiors, exteriors, walls. Uh, you can use drone data to do it too. Um, and then once you've got that, you can actually send, send it out. Um, Do, 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 do. I've actually got a version of it on here and I've used it. Um, uh, like, for those of you that don't know, I, I teach at the Rocky Mount College of Art and Design and there's some amazing sculptures that are there. And I went out and just took my camera on my phone and literally just walked around. It took like 60 shots and then uploaded this into here, uh, dropped it into ZBrush. And then I was able to kind of do whatever I want with it. It actually takes the textures. Uh, so the resolution, um, it's kind of really, it does up to 8K textures for things like this. It's phenomenal. It's super fun to play with. And then to be able to drop that into wherever world you want is fantastic. Um, if you really wanted to, as we mentioned before, you could use this for creating a game. If you wanted to race from one end of the city to the other, you can very easily do that. Unreal is literally built for multiplayer. Um, thus far, we've played with just single player stuff. There's some really easy things you do to make a multiplayer and then boom, we could network together and play, you know, in a world uh, very easily to, with each other. So there's that. Um, I think one of the other advantages of this too is if you're thinking about like a history class, like, oh, where's that? What did, <laughs> what did Union Station look like 10 years ago? It was very different. <laughs> it was very different. So what did it look like when it's first established? You know, Denver was kind of one of those hubs. Um, I don't remember the mayor at the time, but uh, whoever it was, was, you know, wanted to make sure that we had, that Denver was on, was going to stay relevant, and Union Station was part of that. Uh, the original station was actually supposed to be in Cheyenne, and he ended up pitching somehow and won the bid, um, and ended up having Union Station the, the tracks actually go through Denver as opposed to going up through uh, Wyoming, and that kind of kept Denver relevant uh, as the trains really became a thing uh, way back when before my time, before your time, before everybody's time. Oh, good! Thank goodness. We didn't have to worry about it. We I thought we were going to have be in different times. <laughs> it's going to get about awkward. That. It's about that time. Um, yeah. So history, geography, civil engineering, um, yeah. games, obviously. Um, you know, it's, it's really like telling me like how important technology is in in all jobs. Like I'm looking at the Cesium website. I'm looking at like you know aerospace construction um mining you know ocean you know environmental like they're tracking uh radioactivity in oceans around the world using data from things like this and being able to have a tool set like being able to pull this information together you really can think about pretty much any industry Mm -hmm. can leverage these kinds of technologies so this this is not like a oh i i'm not going to work for pixar or i'm not going to work for uh you know game company i'm not designing games this is not i mean this this technology goes way way beyond yeah, way beyond it that stuff don't be ignorant to it 
I visit Boulder. I see a CU up here somewhere. Oh, where I never know where to. Oh, there's a there's a field. Might be somewhere near there. Here we go. There's CU right there. Oh yeah, all those, all the red, red oh. bricks. It's a pretty campus. I actually have the, the buildings. Oh, I got rid of the buildings earlier. Bring them back in here. Now, there aren't buildings the, across the entire world. Uh, this is limited to specific areas that they've actually gone through and scanned. So it's not like you can just kind of get it anywhere you want. Uh, there are definitely areas where it's not going to be a thing. And then they just call out the further you get away. Oh, that's so cool. Little tiny houses up here. Look at that. <laughs> Bottom of that dam. Oh, yeah. What's that? Yeah. That's pretty. What's that lake? I'll be heading up there. Yeah. And plan out your next. Uh, uh, Seriously. Your oh, next you know, I, I haven't seen it, but you know, my, my brother was telling me about, you know, they have like rowing machines and stuff like that, where you actually have a screen and you're, you're rowing in different locations around the world, you know, use this kind of data to gamify your exercise right so you can imagine a treadmill if you mapped out a course and as you're moving it's actually your perspective is is viewing where you're actually running right yeah. it's gotta be yeah. a thing this is this i don't is... exercise so i wouldn't know if that's <laughs> <a good> thing. <laughs> it could be could, could have life. been a thing for 15 years who knows like right. yeah it's a thing so well, cool. cool. Thank you, everybody, for joining me on this one. This is pretty much all I've got for this week. Uh, yeah, if you want to see something specific, let me know. When it comes to this stuff, I would I would gladly do a little research and push your knowledge and push my knowledge. And if it's something that I know, then I'll share my knowledge kind of stuff. But yeah, this is this is a cool for me. It's a toy at this point. Uh, but you can see how quickly and easy it runs within the Unreal Engine and all this stuff. Like I said, this is all you know at, the, at your fingertips. There's no reason not to play with it for sure, for sure. Get used to it because it's it's here to to work with. Um, the other stuff that I didn't actually touch on uh, the 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 tutorial actually goes much farther um, in adding objects to the world. And something to remember about that is this is a huge world, so there's nifty ways that you got to kind of have to deal with them. Um, and get them set up so that things don't pop in and out of existence or float around somewhere inside your world. So, yeah, take a little bit further. I'd love to see what kind of projects you all come up with now that you kind of know that this exists. Uh, this is a great, great tool to kind of have. So, yeah. Yeah, dude. Fun, man. What a little surprise. Who who saw this one coming? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. And di digital twins. I learned yeah, no about way. digital twins. Twins. Twin. It's a thing. It's like the connections. the The connections are happening. All the pieces are coming together. That's the that's the hand signal for uh, can, when you have a connection to a story. So my mm -hmm. wife's a librarian. So <laughs> when she's reading the kids a story and they it talks about somebody had a bad the, the, about a bad dog and kids are like I have connection. My dog ate my 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 library book. <laughs> I have a dog. That is known as a distracting connection. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't add any to the story here. Uh, fun stuff. But yeah, cool. Thanks, dude. That was great. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we'll see you next week. We'll see what kind of fun stuff we pull out of the hat this time. Sounds good. Thanks, Adios, everyone. Everybody. See ya.